And that's the first thing people are going to hear. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, everybody. This is Beetlebear, Ambush Gamer, and a whole bunch of other people. We're going to be doing a dungeon in Shroud of the Avatar. So, um, Kazan, why don't you explain to us what we're going to be doing? We're going to be going through a dungeon. It's a lovely little place called the Compendium of Pain and Suffering. <laughs> nice. And uh, this is also known as the Challenge Dungeon. Uh, Themo Lock, being uh, basically the most powerful avatar on, in this world, should be able to allow us to get through fairly quickly. We've got a, a, a wonderful group of people ranging from BMC to Caverns, uh, Paxes Veritas, and the Republic here. And uh, we're going to be going through and fighting hundreds of uh, skeletons, elementals, liches, uh, wolves, slimes, mimics, and everything else under the sun. Nice. And ever, oh ever increasingly, ever deadly waves of pain and suffering. We're going to have It's a happy fun. place. <laughs> it sounds happy. So how many groups do we have right now? Uh, we have one group, eight people. Uh, uh, we're at, actually at least one short. Once, once, uh, well, what, Jane is coming. Jane's coming, right. and we got Obudo here, and he's not in our group yet, or a group. Well, we currently so we have a group take... filled. But we can yeah, take him we... to twice. Yeah, we can do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's Jack Frost. Oh. This looks like it's going to be fun. Yes. Extreme amounts of fun. And suffering. Suffering. <laughs> Don't forget the suffering. That's the best part. That's going to summon Can what I potato get some power? extra suffering? Uh, By the time you'll get to the lit room, you'll have more than enough, believe me. Wait, are there... Have you gone live? Yeah, I'm live. Okay, Twitch is not updated on my page, so... No! I'm and live it... on Ambush Gamer with zero viewers right now, it says. Okay, well, we're going to see what it says tonight. Oh, yes, now is Twitch has okay. decided, yeah. I yeah, should have tweeted out that we're doing. doing this. I did. I should go retweet that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Eve Mo, this is Shroud of the Avatar. Playing Shroud of the Avatar, this is a pre-alpha game from the famous Richard Garriott, the creator of the Ultima series. Welcome to the stream, by the way. Just going to do a quick tweet. And uh, <laughs> we're waiting for Jane and getting no photo. Oh, you're there? Okay. Yeah. I'm standing inside you. Just going to tweet out really quick. We're streaming live on Twitch. Yay. Yay. Hello, Mr. Fantasy right. and BNN. We're probably getting on a bunch of channels right now. And for the case of this particular run, I think it's best that Themo here is kind of the party lead because um, we <laughs> pale in his powers comparison. <laughs> Themo, do you have a I Twitter? Uh, I do not. You don't? Okay. All right. All right. Tweet is going out right now. Yay. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this stuff. Are we all ready? Uh, yes. Sure. So is Jane... Here is Jane here yes. yet? Yes, yes I, I am. She's right here. All right, well, everyone, click on this blue swirly thing. The blue swilly of doom. The blue swilly of doom. Get your swords oh my ready. Goodness. <clears throat> it's time Chilbane's to kill. Compendium of pain and suffering. That's the that, full name. That looks scary. Chilbane's Compendium of pain and suffering. All right. Yeah, I'm in a broadcast right now. Uh, we know. <clears throat> Oops, I seem to have set the wrong controls from coming back from the Dev Plus. One second. Oh, his nose. Funny I'm thing ready. is, I have the same thing. I'm sitting here like, why won't I jump? Oh. <laughs> ah, there we go. Uh, and we also have uh, the wonderful Dr. Shroud, who's going to be our healer. He's the guy I was telling you was uh, from the caverns, and he role plays specifically a doctor. He is a medical professional in this game. <laughs> if anybody <laughs> should perish and um, respawn before they get resurrected by a doc, 
you'll appear in this room um, and this section here will have like a, a rift uh, going through that rift will bring you back to the rest of the party oh cool that is good for me to know because that's going to happen a lot <laughs> we, sh we should be fine they, he hasn't seen me play, has he? <laughs> he doesn't you know how much your computer play. sucks. <laughs> this guy's level 100. I mean, he might, be good, that, he might be good, but I'm that dangerous. I'll just <laughs> blindly run ahead into a pile of something that will kill me in one hit. <laughs> yeah, what? I'm going the, rooms, the other way! Each, each of the rooms has one of these setups with the, like the ring of torches. Uh, once everybody's inside the ring of torches, it'll it'll spawn the, the mobs for that room. And... Oh. Um, the previous door will close, and once we kill everything, the next door will open. Nice. So everyone just jump in there when they're ready. That's kind of that's kind of cool. <laughs> Cowabunga! Is it based on the group? Yes. Yes. So we couldn't go in here with two separate groups, could we? No. Ah. Uh, well, you could. You'd be in two separate instances. That yeah, makes sense. Exactly. Yeah, but you wouldn't actually be able to see each other, huh? <laughs> oh, great. Hey, wolf. What a yep, wussy. So he, of course he goes after the weakest of us. Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm, I, I'm okay. And there People we go. Them. I'll protect you, my lady. That was it? A couple gray wolves? <laughs> oh, <laughs> just wait. I want to hold your tongue. <laughs> yeah, just wait. <laughs> what you, what? Oh, yeah, baby, even baby, baby like that. The baby's, the baby's like, back there like, stop, Dad. Just stop. <laughs> Don't turn that door. Let me tell you a joke about a lawnmower. Okay. Uh, I think the potato summoning worked. Uh, uh, somebody's not inside the circle. Everybody mm. get close. Group hug. I am. It's Chloe. Chloe Wasp. Wasp. Yep. That's who it seems to be. Or Chlo, if you don't know how to pronounce ah, it. There, there it goes. Let's do this. Cue metal music. We could do that. Oh, we want. So, is there a site anywhere that shows or has the list of, or plays the official music that you can play on Twitch, or do you need to own that music first to be able to play it on your stream? Is that how it works? Anybody know? I actually have some music that I have rights to use. I know, for like, for example, Avatar's radio, only if they were the ones broadcasting on Twitch could they have the music. But there is royalty free or music that they've had permission that they can do a special broadcast to coincide with the action on the screen. And don't forget, guys, that if you want to work with Avatar's Radio, they have the whole collection of all the community music thus far, which I'm sure they'd let you use if you want to play some community music in the background of your streams. I would love that, actually. Yeah, that would be cool as well. I might get with Char on that, because I know she's done some music. Yes, and if you just talk with Amber, uh, if you want to be streaming while the radio is playing as an FYI, they will uh, make sure that only safe music is played on the radio if you're oh. going to be playing the radio. Okay. Just talk with Amber and she'll set everything up for you. That'd be awesome because to hear Amber also on the stream too would be really cool. Exactly. Make it so, number one. Make it so. Take us in. Yes. Oh, Themo is already here. <laughs> Best Coming in the next room, and Themo's laying on a pile of dead elves. Oh, wait, that was last month. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like how some movies start. Oh, wait. What, elf snuff porn? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Themo's actually nice. next release going to be brought up on war crimes against the elven people. <laughs> it has been mentioned. Yes, I know. Oh, my goodness. So I'm noticing no drop frames. I'm thinking the problem was Chrome. When was running. that? Yesterday? Was it running? Oh, last three days. Yeah, last three days. I stopped running. I'm only running the chat in pop out and not a single drop frame. Dr. Shot's just sitting there. Yeah, keep poking me in the back, silly. You silly. <laughs> you silly noodle. <laughs> Kill them all. Oh, I didn't even get to that guy. Yeah, there we go. Oh, Beetle, are you running out of bodies? Yes. Oh, he'll have plenty shortly. 
<clears throat> Maybe even his own. I, I was just going to say. <laughs> you know, I kind of feel like this is the beginning of, if you've ever been on uh, Splash Mountain at Disneyland or Disney World, you know, it starts out all sweet, like zippity doo da, and it's like all fun and these little animals and they're singing to you and stuff. And then all of a sudden, like it's the clink, 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 turn back and then you're being hurtled down. And I don't like that. And I kind of feel like this is the same thing. Like they're just lulling us. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the instructions in each room are going to be important to remember. So uh, before we go in, if Timo has any instructions like he asked for this one, just let him know, uh, or let him talk. Uh, or you could very well wind up being very, very dead. Well, we're, we're fine for a couple more rooms. So this is the first one that gets slightly harder because we've got a lich upstairs here. But Oh, no. Uh, and, oh, moment I thought I was a ghost. I was like, how did a ghost get here? I'm gonna stay away from the lich. Why not? He's cuddly. He wants Come to hug me, just like a creep. Give me a little hug. So, um, chat user Eve Mo is asking, "How is something in pre-alpha?" Simple explanation: It's just the terminology terminology of the industry right now. Um, Terminology changes with the times, so yeah, something in the 90s or the early 2000s being called pre-alpha would be ridiculous. But you know what? If you follow the gaming trends and you read the gaming journals and you read the news, that's the term that a lot of game developers are using to describe this a certain state of development. Well, to be frank with you, in the 80s and 90s and beyond, they wouldn't have released a game in pre-alpha, so they would have never had a need for terminology. Exactly. Um, True. This is basically a step path proof of concept, guys. Um, <laughs> when you start yeah. including players in on development, mm -hmm. you, you have to start dividing up the terminology that you use, too, just to help people understand what's going on. That guy was easy. Come here, you treasure Fighting chest. a box. <laughs> Mimic that. <laughs> very first time that I saw the, the chest mimic, it, I basically just thought back to my AD&D days. Pretty much yeah. Pretty me right in, the, right in the childhood. Exactly. It's yeah, like, you always had that friend who would troll the party, who was a DM, with the mimic. Yep. Every time. Of course. Every time. I have to say, the game is running flawlessly as well in this dungeon. It's actually even uh -huh. running really well for me. Really? Huh. Yeah. There is a bug that you encounter sometimes in dungeons where your screen will go completely black. Uh, if anyone encounters it, if you just open up your video options and turn um, tone mapping off and on really quick, it will fix it. <coughs> yes. Oh, I seem to have summoned the bug and it happened to me. Oh, no. Oh. That is good to know. So everybody is just tuning in and wondering what we're doing. We're playing Shroud of the Avatar with about ten people, eight people, something like that. Uh, oh, eight people is the max in the group. So we're playing with a single group in a dungeon here, and it seems like each room is getting progressively more difficult. Uh, so and this right is the first time you and I have done anything like this in the game, huh, Beetle? Yeah, I think this is the first time you and I have ever run through a dungeon in a game together. No, that's not true. Name well, what am I, chop liver? I brought you to two <laughs> different dungeons. Those were dungeons? Some of them were, like a necropolis. Like a big, I'm talking like a big dungeon party, and we did that a couple of times in WoW, but um, I did got we? made a lot of fun of. Why did I go in there? I don't, I don't remember doing oh, that. what the hell's that? Yeah, right now, no, no, because you got mad because they were mean to me because I kept dying. Oh, that's right. <laughs> they were like 14. Yeah. I really fight monsters so much as just beating up furniture right now. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> All right, this oh. room's got um, slimes. Well, one thing with slimes is if if you attack them with um, melee damage, they will split into smaller slimes. If you kill them with magic, they will die. Um, it looks like most of us are melee, so we'll just um, just have at them. <laughs> Pound them to pieces. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll uh, use my AOE stuff to take care of them, even if they split. No problem. Yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. Everybody get together, do a group hug. Yay! Yay! Hugs and tickles! Fair 
apparently it wants us to get especially close. I don't know. This is no, the snuggle room, huh? Some <laughs> what kind of dungeon do they take us to, Beetle Bear? <laughs> it's the snuggle hole. And then oh, uh, we're calling it for the purpose of the stream, kids. Is snuggle we the S and S and M? We've yes. lost we've <laughs> lost Lazarus. That's oh no. Oh no. Oh, that would be it, yeah. Let's carry him over here. Oh. He's all grab a bat. You know, he, he just popped back on, like MBNN just popped back online too. I'm wondering if like there was like a a hiccup, so we'll just give him a minute to log back in. He just yeah. messaged me. Ah. Uh, let's see. Oh. Um, it should have still triggered if... Maybe we have to get out and go back in to trigger it. Nope. I blame Lazarus, and, um, yeah, fully and completely. It's all his fault. Oh, Doctor's oh, Jane. going. Oh, there it goes. Jane wasn't here. <laughs> I was. I ran out and came back in. It's popped. Oh, okay. So. We popped don't get away from me, Slime. I'm not supposed to actually do anything. I just stand here and look cute. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like my wife. <laughs> oh, they're all going after you, Jane. Yeah, no, they like me. Doc's got you, though. They know that, like, you know, I can make jello shots out of them and they'd be delicious. Doc knows what the hell's going on. We'll, we'll put that on the, on the list. What, Have, that Doc uh, knows what he's developers. doing? So, uh, turning the slimes yeah. into jello sli shots. <laughs> nice. Yeah, or, like, maybe you can get something that you turn them into a drink in the barn, you know? You well, take why do I suddenly want Slimer High C? Yeah, I know. It's... Anybody remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I drank gallons of that stuff as a kid. Did Slimer have a voice? You if you... If, uh, yeah, he did. Did he say stuff like you know? Oh, 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 he so. didn't in the movie, but when they turned him into the cartoon, he was like a yeah, full-on member of the group. He was yeah. like a, which I always thought was weird. I love the animation style of that cartoon, though. It was definitely not your uh, usual American style. Um, this is the first room where people might die. Um, step one, everyone's got to manage to jump up into this. We're screwed on my behalf. Now in here, um, on that platform that we just, in the direction we came in from, there's going to be uh, a lich that appears there, and there'll be um, quite a few different skeletons and some slimes. Um, if, uh, don't go near the lich, um, <laughs> well, yeah, and just, just stick with Doc, he'll keep you healed. <laughs> Good old Doc. And I can sit here and heal myself too, so... Uh, if I stay out of the way and Doc needs to heal other people. Whee! Die, skeleton archer, scumbag! Eat this arrow. I almost took an arrow to the knee, and then I slayed the guy. Okay, that's pretty easy. Pretty easy. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah, that guy's dead. So funny, it's just, but it's just, uh, tongue twister. I, I just crashed. Uh oh, you crashed? Yep. Oh, his nose. We're losing half our party. <sighs> yep, you're offline now. Yep. No, it's gonna be a force quit. That sucks. Yep, yep. Walk step climb. But if I don't come back in, you guys can continue, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, I might just not do that then. Why did you do that on our behalf? No, no, it's, I think the baby might be, uh, needing me in a few minutes, and I'd rather drop out while it's convenient than, like, you guys are like, oh, crap, she's standing there dying and not moving at all. <laughs> Which is pretty hard to tell, except that when I'm playing, I usually run around in a lot more circles. And we could always invite Obudo if we're short. I think he's still on, and he'd love to join us. 
Okay, you can't bring new members into the group once you've started. Oh. This is the- this is- now, just to let you know, a bit of a difference between this dungeon and the way that they want to do dungeons like this and your average dungeon like Prophos and some of the others. The challenge dungeons are basically made to be just that. Yeah. So, they're- you're in, uh, and you go to the end. If everybody dies and wipes, I believe that uh, you start over. So, oh, wow. yeah. Hold up, hold it up before you go forwards. Hold up, guys. Um, this next room uh, is full of spiders, and there's um, mm. eggs that if you if you go near those eggs, they will hatch into into more spiders. So, as you come in, if you just follow me, we can avoid um, hatching extra ones. Whoa. Just go straight to this point here and double click on this ladder. And then jump across to the, to the middle section. Nice. Uh, the spider just popped out. That's alright, just oh, ignore it. Jump over here, uh, heal Chloe. That's alright. Now, if most of you stay on that middle platform and just sort of... Mm -hmm. Oh, it actually doesn't matter. Way. <laughs> oh, I run around and hit some stuff, it's alright. But just, just remember, going near those eggs makes more spiders. So you guys should be glad I, I got kicked, because uh, if I was still there, I'd probably be inadvertently sitting on one. Because to finish the room, you've got to kill the spiders that spawned when we went into the middle section. We don't actually have to kill the additional ones that hatch out of the eggs. But um, it's no great hassle to do that anyway. So if any, anybody's just tuning in and wondering what we're doing, we're killing spiders in a dungeon. I think this is a challenge dungeon, is that what you said, Kazan? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's so correct. It seems to be getting progressively more difficult as we progress through the dungeon. Right now we're fighting spiders and... I guess just spiders, right? For this room. Uh, for this room, yeah. But we fought slimes and skeletors and wolves. Oh, this one just had a bunch of babies. That's not good. Just a baby. Use the force, Luke. But uh, the way that this game works right now with these different kinds of dungeons is kind of tantamount to showing the various types of gameplay that they want to have in the game. Uh, they've also talked about doing gameplay styles uh, for players that would be something along the lines of the... Uh, like a in the gladiator movements where you just open up and waves of enemies keep coming and randomized nice. forms and uh, uh, the developers even talked about doing like uh, almost like you know you play these shooting games and you have the survival where wave after wave of different groups would come and you have to survive to get to the next wave yeah so there's a lot of different things for PV and PvP that they want to do uh, they definitely don't want to do the traditional in-game grind to get here to the end and then you're done kind of thing so, and that's a, that's also kind of supporting the roleplay stuff we have going, which you've seen over and over again. Right. So it's it, kind of the greatest thing about the game is the diversity of the types of gameplay that you can actually get. <laughs> it seems like no matter what, you can change the gameplay as you see fit as a yeah, player. Yeah, exactly. And that's really evident in the skill system which you've seen, even though it's in an early form. I mean, you could be such a different kind of person by changing around your skills. You know. Right. Like me as a mage, I don't even use weapons at all, even though there are mage specific weapons you can use. What kind of mage specific weapons are there? Uh, there are different kinds of stabs that you can uh, get, and there are different types of wands that you can even get. Um, and you can even have a wand dual wielded, I believe, that still works. Oh, that's pretty <laughs> cool. So uh, you could dual wield wands and be like a magic. Uh, like a, a mage version of a gunslinger type. <laughs> Righty, our, cool. our doors, our doors open. If everyone heads over this way. Um, who who can't hear us? 
Uh, Chloe would be one, and she's still fighting spiders. Right. And uh, I can, I'll can i shout out if there's any questions in the chat and stuff, since you guys are all busy killing things. If there's anything that comes in from uh, the viewers, I will be happy to relay their messages. And I'll be back in just 30 seconds or so. i got to grab a drink. Sure. Hmm. All right, well, we'll just stand here for a minute. <laughs> All the excitement of the dungeon, standing around in a circle looking confused. Sounds pretty accurate. Well, as, <laughs> you know, you, you compare it to the raids in other games where you spend two or three hours assembling for a raid that might not happen. So, I'm, I'm actually enjoying and appreciating the eight party uh, party limits that they have in this game. I kind of feel it's just right in a lot of ways. It For somebody like myself, who is not a, an experienced gamer. I never played any Ultima games. I never played an MMO until I met Kevin, and then it was like, wow, for a couple of months. Uh, the fact that I'm actually like, even like, long on that is really kind of cool for me. Because, like I say earlier, when we did do a couple things before, yeah, I got, I was horrible, and I deservedly got yelled at by, you know, teenagers, but uh, it was very hard for a Beetle to be in the room for that. <laughs> All right, here I come. Oh, we're all good to go. All right. Yeah, we do seem to be losing some people here, but uh, <laughs> yeah, like the the further we get in, it really is like a like a dungeon. Like the further we get in, we've lost another party member. It's know. like permadeath, though, for those people. Yeah, right. And Lazarus was never heard from again. He did answer in Twitch chat. He just that couldn't rejoin. Would have hurt. That water hurts you, by the way. So you don't want to like hang out in it. Thought it was kind of tasty. Yeah, it's brown. It cleans you, right? Mm-hmm. At least that's what City Hall told me. <laughs> How'd you guys get up there? Oh, there's a ladder. Uh, ladder. Use a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. I'm like, how'd you guys climb up there? They've learned to fly. Slimes can get incredibly Didn't annoying. Didn't you ask sometimes. if there were levitating spells? Yeah, I think there really should be some kind of wind-based levitation spell. That'd be awesome, especially in a game with this kind of physics and stuff. Well, if you'll notice, uh, one of the things, are. one of the things that you'll see on the pledge levels is early access to skills. They talk about because they consist, they plan to consistently add new skills to the game as the game's being developed in patches and patches, not just for major expansions. So, That's they'll be awesome. adding skills in all the time. So, which is which is good for some things. We all know there's going to be some players that are, you know, when things change, they're going to say, ah, that skill ruined everything. But I like the thought because, like, as an example, when release 19, when, when that comes up here, we'll be uh, seeing, you know, for instance, music and taming coming into the game. I can't wait. And that's to be expected with a pre-alpha game, is that it's going to be changing a lot. All yes, the time. but even after the game is released, they intend to release new spells and skills all the time. Oh, that's cool. They don't want the skill system to be static. That's why they don't want there to be a real level limit. They're setting the soft cap for a reason. Right. Although Themo, of course, discovered the fact that the soft cap wasn't quite as soft as they thought uh, when he reached 100 yeah, yeah. this time around. They weren't really ready for someone to hit that level yet. <laughs> no one would have thought somebody would be as nutty as you. How quickly are you going to do it next time? Oh. Um, actually, just as quickly, because we've just discovered on the Super Secret Test Server that now, after a wipe, you get uh, uh, two times EXP gain until you reach the level you were at before the wipe. Oh, wow. Which is not really at that super secret because they did say in a previous hangout that they were going to do that. Or anybody yeah. goes and tries to take the axe to Themo for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, when Winfield comes calling for you, I'll defend you. 
<laughs> what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> and Evie's asking what is the soft cap, and I'm not sure if they mean what was the limit or what exactly do you mean by soft caps. So maybe we could address uh, both. I could address well, both. Uh, yeah, go you ahead, do. It. Oh well, uh, basically there there will be no maximum level uh, in the game. You can keep going, but um, it scales so uh, dramatically that there's a point where um, it's going to take so long uh, to get another level that that they call that the the soft cap. Right. Um, basically, yeah, like uh, it. The amount of time and EXP it took to get to level 90 is the exact same amount of time and EXP it took to go from 90 to 100, for example. Wow. Yes. Once you reach 100, you're looking at like, uh, once they get all the final uh, calculations in for that, the soft cap will effectively be implemented. You'll start seeing entire levels take as long as it took to get to 1 to 100 eventually. Wow. We got it. And is it gonna is it gonna be kind of scaled? So like like I've noticed with some games they have a tendency to uh, you level faster for the first like five levels or ten levels, yep. and then and then it gets like exponentially longer, like you know doubles or triples in length exactly. each time. Well, the way that Richard the- explained it is basically up to level twenty is like you're training, you're you're getting your most basic physical fitness, right? So they, that you can get there fairly quickly once you do it. So that's why you can get there. You know, when you're when you're training and you're doing dungeons, it's not that tough to reach 20. And then once you get to 50, you're kind of an athlete at that point. <laughs> Going from beyond 50 is more or less you're training for like the Olympian and beyond. Right. So the you know so you got to the road to 20 and then the road to 50 and then the road past 50 to 100 gets increasingly difficult. So yeah, um, that is that is a nice thing. And Themo can tell us whether or not that actually is more or less accurate, but that is what how Richard explained it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, hang on, Kazan, we've got a slight issue. A slime has leaked in between the cracks that is inside this block of stone. We need some AoE. I shall save you. What was this thing? It's in there. Some slime's getting in between the cracks in the masonry. It's my fault. I tried to see what Gust would do to a slime, and apparently it makes it leak through the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for that. Well, that was great. That answered it. the question, so thank you. <laughs> that got it. The door's open. Nice. Yeah, and, of course, the EXP rates and gains are going to be something they're playing with. They have a, just a ridiculously long spreadsheet of all the various calculations that go into that. But Absolutely, uh, soft cap means that there's no real limit, but there's a theoretical limit because unless you are actually an elf and live for 10,000 years, <laughs> you're not going to get but uh, so high in the, in the brackets. Yeah, they aim for uh, for the average player. They want it to take about a year of playing every day to get to 100. Yes. Uh, Babblefish is asking, what housing level is uh, is it worth buying now? Well, Are you talking about like the a... backing? I'm assuming. Do you guys if have you any pull, thoughts on that? If you plan yeah. to pledge, there's a lot of reasons to pledge now. But of course, you're going to get a little bit of bias from us, right? Because we've been longtime backers. But if you back one of the pledge levels, if you really feel that it's you know you want to back this game and and get the housing that comes with it, the unique thing about the pledge levels is going to be that the pledge level rent-free deeds will actually be rent-free for uh, your lifetime, so you will never have to pay housing of those. That, if it's something that you're interested in pledging to, would be worth it in itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it, it's also worth mentioning that housing is intended to be very scarce once this game goes live. Um, not everybody will be able to get a house. Uh, pledging is uh, one way to ensure you're going to uh, get get yourself a um, property deed. Yep. But at the same time, as I've said many times before, I, I mentioned pledging, and I, of course, have pledged early in the game. If that's not your cup of tea, uh, anyone who's looking at something right now that you can get with money, uh, like real money, there will be equivalents to that, if not the exact same thing, that will be in-game uh, purchasable for gold, with the exception of what's at the top two highest pledge tiers, which is the Keep and Castle Deeds, because those are like super special for the really high-end backers. 
And to put my own two cents in here, here's the reason why you should get this game. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Yes. Simple enough. Look at us. We're killing monsters. We're hanging out. Eight people hanging out in a pre-alpha game. Killing monsters, talking about the game. We obviously know a whole bunch of information about this game, but in the end, it's fun. There's so much to learn about this game from other players, from the internet. It's a social situation while you're also fighting and solving puzzles. I mean, there's so many things you can do. The possibilities are limitless here. It really is. I just pasted the link for the uh, housing FAQ basically uh, on, into the the channel, but uh, uh, Babblefish is asking how much is the lowest rent free house, and then we have another question. Uh, when you guys have a moment, just let me know when you're ready to take a question. I believe that would be the ancestor tier, would it not? And that is what 275, I think it was. Yeah, but that comes with a rent free road deed. That, that that also I believe is high enough so it's paid for not just episode one but um, the oh, first yes. five episodes so it's you're actually um, getting five games for that price uh, mm -hmm. on top of your pledge rewards. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, rather, exactly it's, yeah right. because there's plans for for right now for five episodes, right, and then potentially more there's, after that. Or there's plans for five episodes, and there's kind of a stretch goal in their minds of what they might do with the sixth and seventh episode as well. But yeah. they kind of have their blueprints made for the first five episodes. Past the fifth episode, the sixth and seventh and beyond, will be completely new designs. Um, so that, it's pie in the sky. Yeah. Okay, I mean, then... what they've packed into this game right now is more than a lot of game design, game development that I've seen in many released games on Steam, <laughs> let alone a pre-alpha game. And no yeah. I'm not... I, I've only been playing this game for 10 days, so it's, I'm not biased or anything like that. I really like this game. I think this game is really amazing. It has so much potential that it's already fulfilled, and there's so much potential that is coming. And then Eve was asking, or Eve was asking um, about the challenge dungeon. Is it locked for that level so only people of the same level can join, or can any level join? Which any I level answered. Can play with any, yeah, because obviously I was in there with Thermo, and that ain't happening in, in some games. But, well, here's the cool thing I'm level like 32 or whatever, and I'm fighting these guys just like these other guys are. I feel satisfied by it. I don't feel like I'm just waiting for them to kill those guys. You guys, you guys are not letting me read the second, more prevalent part of the question. How are. How is skill level balanced in a dungeon like that? I mean, can is this is this something that is right now because of the state of the game that I can go in with some no. like massively overpowered guys, or will I always be able to keep up? Overpower level does not mean overpowered in this game. Period. That's what yeah. it comes down to. Uh, yeah. Level you, is once, like currency for skills. If you really think exactly about it. every level, you get skill points for training that will you can divert into skills of course after you're gonna need some levels to get you on fighting form so to speak but after you get past a certain amount look I've seen Themo and other people who are in the level 90 to 100 bracket get in PvP you know beat by people 20 and 30 levels lower than them and beyond and I've seen worse yeah. than that so I've seen Darkstar be beaten by somebody <laughs> 70 levels lower than him but then again you know <laughs> But it all comes down to the skill and how you play the game. Uh, Kevin is a uh, beetle bear here has uh, done a lot with the hot bar and shown off the way that the combat system works. It's very important to know that knowing how that system works and using it is basically how you get affected in this game, not getting uber levels. Um, just before we kick this room off, this is actually the hardest room um, in the compendium. It's not oh, the wow. end. It's it's just the hardest room. We're gonna get. Uh, a series of fire and uh, water elementals, uh, ice elementals spawn. Oh my god, um, really? And if our healer dies, uh, even I find this room difficult. So we just, we pretty much, see where I'm standing now? We pretty much want to hold out as a group here. So they're all drawn in so Kazan and I can AOE them and uh, Doc can heal, uh, keep everybody alive. Sounds good. All right, so back over here a little. Oh, they're spawning. And hello, the caverns. Hey, the caverns, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. 
who from the cabins is on. I'm not looking at the chat right this second. That is the username. Don't Sophie. know who it is. Yeah. Is that oh, Sophie? Okay. Oh, Sophie. Hey, Sophie. Hello, Sophie, Sophie is one of the most awesome people that I've seen in this game. Heal yourself, Kazan, if dogs. Uh oh. Oh, Chloe, yeah. I'm. Oh, damn it, I missed her. It sounds like it's getting ugly now. Yeah, we're bumping uglies in here. It, no. <laughs> no, what have I told That's you about that? Um, no. Like oh, Chloe's pizza. alive. Oh, it's Ian! It's Ian Spilios! Oh, Spilios! Oh. Love it. Hey, Ian. Where's Ian? Is he in here? No, he's Not in the in chat. This. Oh, in the chat. But, uh, else one of his guildies is with us. Dr. Shroud is from his guild, so the oh. Cavernous Guild. Well, yeah. Doc, I don't know if Doc can hear me, but Doc, you are doing such a fantastic job healing everybody. He's a wonderful, wonderful uh, healer. Nice. No, Own Beetle's that. not going to be satisfied with my heals now. No, it's you're learning. All like, you're doing well. You're doing really well. going to be really like, well. you suck, you always get me killed. You don't get me killed. I guess I'm praying hard enough then. Oh! These fire elementals look cool. You can actually summon one as the highest end fire spell. What? That's awesome. Yeah, you can summon one of these to fight for you. There's also... Uh, is it um, water and ice elementals that you can summon as well, and rock elementals? Yeah, I, I quite like the water one because it, it heals. It heals you. you. <laughs> that stupid fire elemental trying to burn me. What do I look Don't like? Gasoline? Just, just be careful. The lava hurts. <laughs> yeah. This is a cool a room because it shows water over here and then it shows lava over there and that's what spawns in the room. Fantastic. And Ian just got the computer all set up so the Caverns is going to start to stream some uh, exactly. Shroud as well. Nice. And uh, Ian, I will uh, go a stream up on the schedule um, as I had told you I was going to do when I start making that calendar. So we'll start seeing the stream schedule of everybody involved in the event coming on the 30th. Sweet. So we have a lot of wonderful people from outside and inside of the community supporting this, and I, I just say that I think the whole community is humbled by the outpouring of support. Isn't there something going on tomorrow night? Yes, the one-year Hackslayer anniversary and Shroud of the Avatar. At what Not time? Only, uh, I have to look at the calendar, actually. See, I think I don't it's know 8 p.m. Eastern, but I'm not sure. Well, everything in New Britannia is in central time, which is exactly. important to note when you look at the calendar. Oh. And I can Every actually look that calendar. stuff up for you guys if it's on a calendar that I can see. Go to avatarcircle.com. All the major calendars are linked in there. Perfect. That's what I thought, but I wanted to double check. Mm -hmm. And uh, real quick, uh, Ian uh, says uh, he's just learning how to, how to stream. And I just want to say, Ian, it's always a learning process. Beetle and I change our settings all the time. It's, you hear us. You've seen us. Uh, so don't worry about it. And for those of you guys that are viewing streams, when you find a new streamer, you know, like... Be chill with them. Be cool. Give them some encouragement. Everybody sucks at the beginning. Definitely. It's only with practice that we get better. And uh, Eve has another question. Um, and I think it's a, it's a great question. And Eve, definitely you'll see a lot of this on our channel. But um, the combat system is super unique. And, and I know Beatles having a lot of fun with it. So if somebody kind of wants to kind of maybe give a high-level overview of the combat system. That's what we need to highlight. The explanation of the glyphs and the runes and all. I yes. did a really good okay, job with that earlier. That down. Okay. So we got, we'll highlight that. We'll put that up for new players. I, I need an assistant to go through and like. <laughs> and then your assistant's going to need an assistant too. Yeah. Well, you know. And if I could, um, because we mentioned Ian coming in and, and streaming, and we talked about you were talking about other people, you know, their, their adventures in streaming as well. Uh, come to me on the Shroud of the Avatar forums at Wrath Phoenix. If you uh, want to stream for this game and you, f you feel like you really have a passion for it, let's, t let's talk about that because we're always looking for people to help support the game and the community, especially at these critical times coming up. Here they come. Oh, elf mages? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I'm going with Thema. Whatever Thema text, that's my bitch. You know, I like to throw this out there. This is something that I did more of back in the day when we were doing like the 12 Days of Indian stuff, and then I kind of uh, 
you know, everybody pretty much knows now that I kind of had to disappear for a while when I was pregnant because I was throwing up on everything. Uh, and that doesn't mix well with computers and keyboards. But uh, one of the things that we were doing is we were working with some new streamers and kind of like giving them some pointers and stuff. So if there's somebody out there that wants to stream this game, but doesn't have the confidence or is concerned that it's not going to look good and they want to hit me up, um, you know, I'd be happy to like watch their stream or watch a highlight if, if I can't make the actual stream and give them some feedback. And I, I'll be honest, I'll be like, you know, this part sucks. But I'll also tell you the good stuff. So, you know, anybody can always feel free to hit me up and I'll try and help them out for, uh, you know, to learn. This is a cool room. I'm trying to get a good shot of it for the stream, but I love the tree in the middle with the lights and stuff. I have us line up, do a bit of a salute. Yeah, if you guys wanna. The party. How far have we gotten, Themo? Uh, we're almost at the end. Wow, we're doing pretty good then, huh? Yeah. Awesome. Nice. You guys look badass and awesome. Especially Doc with his, like, elf Chloe Santa go. Claus outfit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, do your most badass stuff right now, guys. You got it. Doesn't the Mad Hatter also have a video on, um, like, Ed using Herman. the combat... Uh, did I say it wrong? Uh, I'm trying to, like, <laughs> pull up, like, the, the, the link. And I'm like, is there a video on the combat system, though, that's, like, a very good for a new user? Yes, uh, there is. Uh, uh, a couple of videos that he has. Uh, do understand that his... Videos can be dated because of how quickly this game develops. Mm -hmm. um, but his videos are extremely helpful, not only at letting you see the housing and some of the features that he highlights, but he does releases to show what every how to get every single release hat each month. So he does tutorials for that. He does tutorials for deck building, combat, everything. I mean, it's really, really cool what he does. By the way, Eve Mole, if you're looking to buy this game and you're like still wondering why you should... Let's just say this. I've been streaming this for 10 days, and we've gotten at least one person to get the game every day, and we've been playing with these people, and not every a single day. person has complained at all. They're loving the game. So if you're what you're watching right now and what you're seeing appeals to you, this is the core essence of the game right here, man. This is the thing that will always remain in the game, the social player community driven aspect of the game. The game itself is just going to get bigger and better and more full, so... And I'd like to welcome ex programmer to the uh, or pro gamer. We always do that to I know, you. We always call him programmer. <laughs> ex pro gamer, thank pro you for gamer. joining the stream and hosting us. We oh, appreciate nice. that. I'm stuck in a tree. <laughs> it happens. Yes. Ah, so make the, the the combat question a little easier too. Why are some of the cards uh, like I, I think they mean the deck highlighted in green versus the ones that are maybe in red? That's telling me I can com combine them to make mm -hmm. a combination or just combine them to make them more powerful. Yep. So the combos are when you have two different ones, like yeah, right, like say a kick and a punch, and you combine them together to make a kick punch. But I can take like three punches and make it a stronger punch. <laughs> That's yep. a really good explanation of it, actually. That really is. That's, That's pretty much really exactly it. It's like, think of it like Street point Fighter, point. but not with a joystick. Kids, I worked yeah. in customer <laughs> service for tech support for like 10 years. If you need me to dumb something down and explain it to somebody that it's not of it. I'm the person for that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not we'll saying that. I'm not saying that anybody needs it dumbed yeah, down, but I'm saying for the people like me, I can translate. Well, to add to that, um, with stacking, which is when you're adding um, uh, ones that are the same to each other, it not only makes them more powerful, but it, it also reduces the the focus cost to cast them, uh, which gives, uh, which allows you to fight sustained battles a lot longer uh, like if I didn't stack um, my high tier spells I would actually run out of focus and just be standing there getting uh, killed in a lot of these rooms so stacking them changes the amount of focus it uses Yes. <laughs> it is no longer called stacking I think we should call it kick punching <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yes it does it reduces it in, in fact um, that's the combo uh, yeah, kick yeah. punches combo. That was from a user in our in our channel. <laughs> That's, yeah. well, you should wait for stacking. We should use my my wife Jenny. She whenever she talks about pulling putting something together, she's like just shove it in there, pop it on. <laughs> it. She used stuff like that, so we just call shoving them instead of stacking them. From now That's on. awesome. 
I've got a shoving. I do not believe that you do not know what MMO means. Who? Pro gamer? Really? Yeah. No. Eve, let me just let me just tell you about your concern. Okay, I want you to just close your eyes for a moment. Picture yourself as a new user in Shroud of the Avatar. You're like, oh crap, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. I had to kill these skeletons. And then you walk into this town, right? You get through that basic beginner level. And somebody walks up to you Sophie. in town. <laughs> yeah, somebody, or some, but there are other people. So or myself. I do it yeah. now. There are pet, that's Beetle, don't don't narrow Sorry. my focus, okay? Let me. I, I'm trying to paint a picture here. I want I want Eve to have a you know like a a guided meditation on this. Okay, I see. I see. So, so you walk into the new town, right? You're alone. You've got this sword that some old dude gave you off a dead body, and and you know you get maybe you got some gold and some skeletons just kick your ass a little bit. And you're like tired and weary, and you don't know where you're going. And you walk into a town, and all of a sudden, six or seven people greet you and start trying to give you things like armor and weapons and stuff and then people invite you to the pub and you don't know these people but you know they seem cool and they're giving you things so next thing you know you're hanging out with like all these cool people and you can't stop playing you know because you're also talking to them offline so and they're like hey you want to go to a dungeon and it's like yeah. oh my god i was about to log off but that sounds kind of fun with like eight people exactly and, and, don't forget, and so, suddenly the developers appear yeah exactly yes. oh my god so you don't need what i'm saying though really is you don't need friends that play the game you will make the friends here, whether you think you will or not. You yep. will. They won't allow you not to become friends with people. So if you like are it's absolutely awesome. hating other people and you do not ever want to play anyone, go play Skyrim, or go yeah. play you know something else that doesn't have a multiplayer feature because this takes multiplayer and makes it what you want it to be, not what it is in most games. All right, um, not to alarm anyone, but you may all be a bit shy. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. What? Uh oh. Okay. What happened? What did I miss? This is this room spawns um, a dozen or so liches. Oh my god! What, what we want to do once we trigger trigger it? See, uh, can everyone see where I am over here? We want to run over here, and I want to get everybody standing in behind this pillar. Okay. Um, if we can do that very quickly, like as soon as it spawns, we can fight them one at a time. Um, if anybody falls over their feet and is too slow, we will be fighting them all at once. Uh oh. Um, I'm so glad I'm not there. <laughs> which, which we may or may not be able to handle, but uh, there is a possibility we're all about to die. It's okay, we can do it. I'm ready. Okay. Team Awesome, go. Oh, wait. For, okay, go. <laughs> I have a bad Good idea split. about this for you, Beetle. Um, we forgot Chloe can't read chat, I think. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Remain calm. <laughs> While your life force is extracted. Oh, jeez. Is there something here attacking me? I can't even see. Oh, there we go, that's a good view. Are you just standing back and... There may or may not be lots action. of things attacking us. Just close your eyes and slash things as hard as possible. I don't know what y'all talking about. I'm just AOEing over here. I am dead. Oh, Beetle. <laughs> it took 96 points of damage at once. <laughs> um, I'm alive. If... Okay. Wait, you're dead or alive? I'm alive now because a doc. Oh. Doc is awesome. <laughs> yes, Doc's a very good healer. We can do it, guys. We can do it. I feel like we're going to end this and you guys are going to be like, the end of Ender's Game. <laughs> now you really have to fight the orcs that are in the liches that are outside the house right now. We built the garage with the liches. And I, if I, you win, I'm you trying win. not to spoil it for anybody who doesn't know the end of Ender's Game, but if you I don't... I watched that this morning, actually, ironically really? enough. Yes, I did. Why is everything in my life so freaking coincidental to other people's lives? I don't know. It's just, if you really want to talk weird. about coincidence, you and I need to sit down and talk about mine and Materio's life. Jeez. <laughs> there you go. We we basically after after the two of us stopped playing Ultima Online, our lives took a mirror approach to everything that we've done past that to get back here. It's like, a, you know, we have this this life where all of our jobs, everything that we did, 
uh, leaving Ultima Online and going into the professional world was basically the same but with different names attached, you know. Up until the point that now I work with a company that specializes in Microsoft stuff, he works with a company that specializes in Apple stuff. Uh, but awesome. otherwise they do the exact same thing. I went to work with Sony, he went to work on uh, Dark Age of Camelot. Same thing. Oh, <laughs> DAOC was, was a good, kind of a good replacement, I guess, for UO for a while, but... Mm -hmm. I think it really but ever We got stories, it. man. <laughs> yeah. I would have never played that if it weren't for a coworker at when I was younger telling me I should play uh, DAOC, but I loved it once I played it. The only reason that I didn't play it that much is because I was never a fan of PvP. The PvP? Yeah. Yeah, and that game PvP was a heavy element in it. I don't mind people PvP. I just it's not me. And uh, for those of you in the chat that are new to us, we do stream Shroud of Avatar pretty much every day. It's 10 days straight so far, and I don't <laughs> see that trend ending anytime soon. It's um, like a combo. Like, the more days we get, the more I feel like it's, like, we need to do it, you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. And, uh, like, this is actually his second, our second stream of the day. Beetle had to basically break it up to get a physical therapy. And, uh, so yeah, we'll be back, but we also do occasionally, occasionally stream other games, um, and, uh, Beetle does, uh, interviews as well, I just posted the information about the Richard Garriott interview, uh, and then if, uh, you're interested in learning more about, uh, this game or other games, you know, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Twitch, and we will be able to, you know, get you all the information as, uh, as it develops. Kazan, come back around behind the pillow so they come around here. I'm trying to get it to move at all. Yeah, it won't when you're up there. If you stay, yeah. See. Oh, good. <laughs> yes, Free open, folks. That happens. Thema knows all the tricks. He does. He's a wealth of information. He should be a QA fact, tester, actually. If you uh, have read just about anything in the wiki, all the information in SodaDB and, and the wiki often comes from Thema, just as an FYI. That's awesome. He tests like a beast. So, Thema. As one player to the other, you're awesome, man. <laughs> Ow. You gotta, so, gotta, Timo, are you a QA tester in real right life, here. or are you just really passionate about this game? Uh, no, I've just got a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> 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 you know, between surfing yeah. and you know, putting shrimp on the barbie and stuff like that, right? Uh, I, I have, um, I have beta tested um, a few games in the past, but um, I haven't been paid for it for a long time. So I just, um, I'm very enthusiastic about this project. I was a big fan of, of the previous Ultima games and uh, quite a few members on the development team. So I've got um, high hopes for this game and I'm doing everything I can to, to help, basically. So um, testing um, the high end of things is something that doesn't get done by many because it, it takes a lot of time and effort. So uh, that's how I'm contributing. That's awesome. So, Beetle, a pro gamer had a, uh, a very uh, interesting point about your Beetle Tar. Oh, yeah? What your about hair, it? Your hair is facing the opposite direction. Well, that's because the camera reverses. No, the mirror reverses. I, I said you did it mirror image. They're seeing you how I see you. You're seeing yourself opposite. Yeah, it's opposite. going the right way. No, because you're looking... Wait. <laughs> yeah. Just listen it's, to the lady, man. It. Just listen to her. Wait, you drew, oh, you right. pixeled yourself like you were looking at a mirror. Did I? Yeah. No, because if I'm looking Either at a mirror, your it would hair look like is, this. Or it's just because your hair is long, you needed like a haircut. I you are a ragamuffin. I cannot take you out in public, and I probably should have taken the cam off. I really do need a street. haircut, though. I it's safe one. to move. We've, we've cleared it. We've got one more room to do. I mean, I'm like three inches away from being a beetle. Like an actual beetle. You know, beetles. Don't do that. Beetles? I want <laughs> to hold your hand. Use the force, Luke. Okay, guys, I, uh, uh, chat, and guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hop off for a second here. I'm going to stay connected on the uh, Skype but mute and check the baby and stuff. So uh, just chat, be aware that nobody may be reading your questions for a second or two. I will be right back, though. Uh, this room will spawn a big mob of angry mimics. Uh, <laughs> just run over here to where I am. Uh, uh, the dog jumped in before I got a chance. Quick run to me, otherwise you're going to get eaten. 
Don't get eaten. Jumped in behind you. That's a lot of furniture trying to eat us. <laughs> oh, the humanity of it they all. They kind of look like babies with all their open mouths, you know, like baby birds or something. Mama, mama. Why don't you go and try to give him some seed? Yeah. Give him a little hug. I got a seed for him. It's called my battle mace. That is the sound of a thousand terrible things coming at us. Yes, there are so many. Here then comes more. <laughs> the, the barrel mimic looks so freaking cute, I don't know why. The little legs and stuff. I don't know. I don't imagine it's supposed to look cute, right? Or is it? You never know with this crew. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine how much gold we'd be making if we actually cared? Yeah. This is how people afford houses, right? <laughs> uh, well, this dungeon actually doesn't give you a whole lot of golden rewards, ending. Um, but uh, it's definitely good for experience, and it you know it basically evens out. <laughs> Well, we, we just finished it. There's a chest in there. If, if one of the streamers wants to go grab the loot. Uh, sure. Which is, is uh, anybody else streaming, or is it just me? No, uh, no one else is streaming right now. Lazarus right, check out this died loot. somewhere back there. Wow. All the reagents, black pearl, corpse wax, five poke, uh, focus potions, 14 garlic, almost a thousand gold. Oh my goodness. Wow, 16 repair kits, serpent scales, there's so much good loot in here, guys. If you had played the game for the last 10 days like I have, you'd understand how cool this chest is. And these other guys are probably laughing at me, like, oh, it's a pansy's chest, you know, there's a bigger one over here or something, but this is pretty awesome. Well, this this chest used to give us, like, 90,000 gold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's, for us, it's disappointing, but, um, yeah. <laughs> Take the well, goal. it's it, that's funny though, right? Because we are the we're the veterans, right? We, we've played this game so long, and then we see it's kind of fun to see what the new people who are looking at this chest, seeing what it gives away, you know how they react because that's the actual reaction that the developers are aiming to get. Well, and consider <laughs> yeah. this: I've been looking to try and figure out a way to get reagents for days, other than buying them, and like to see a giant chest full of reagents. And repair kits and gold and stuff it just makes me tickled pink. And um, that's it. We've completed uh, Chillblain's Compendium of Pain and Suffering. Oh that my was god, that's awesome. awesome! And I thought Regens were a bitch to get. Beetle. Regens are a bitch to get. <laughs> <laughs> so, a story about the Regens thing. When I first played UO in 1990, at the end of '96 or '97 or whenever that November it came out. Um, I had a couple friends that played it with me, and we called reagents, we called them regents. I don't know why, because we're stupid idiots or something. But we even went so far to create like a metal sounding song on acoustic guitars called Regents Are a Bitch to Get. Because they were a bitch to get, and they still are a bitch to get if you ask me as a new player in this game. Which makes them all, the, all more valuable when I see a giant box of them like this. Well, let me tell you the trait behind reagents is there's a, there's a certain gathering skill foraging that you need to get, and uh, once you get enough points into that gathering skill, then even with a single node of reagents, when you mine it, you have a chance that uh, you don't destroy the node, oh. so that you can actually go back to the same node and get five or six or seven times. The reagents we noticed that node. I think on the lower level stuff. Yeah, we did. Yep. That's so awesome. just let you that's just what let I'm you know. my that's, points in Beetle. <laughs> yes. My so there, are, there are skills that are directed <laughs> towards gathering and there are skills directed towards crafting. Crafting skills won't be making it in just yet. They will possibly next release, but next release, some of the mini games and events come from crafting will be making it. In. So yeah, Zakir, you can you can actually get this game right now. I'm gonna uh, this game right now. I'm gonna put the link in for you, and some of the information. Um, yeah, you can absolutely start playing today, and you can add Jane and John Beetlebear as friends. You betcha. 
Um, and the cool thing about getting the game now is even though you you may have to deal with a few of the side effects of it being an unfinished game is one, you get to be in at the very beginning. And two, the players are getting so much ability to affect where the game is going and see their ideas get implemented that it's really kind of like actually building towns, actually building communities, actually building a society. Well, and if you guys still aren't convinced, I'm going to be actually interviewing the main developer, the, the creator of this game, essentially, Richard Garriott, on Tuesday, the 28th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Stop by and see what he has to say about the game. Yeah, give us a follow. Give us a, you know, um, it helps if I type the right stuff. Oh, the uh, oh, you found it. I was going to tell you about the portal to get out of there. Um, if the leader of the party leaves this dungeon and there's still people hanging around back there, uh, the mimics will come back. So oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Is that a and, way to uh, continually the way, get experience? Uh, Beetle Bear? Yep. Um, if you could share some of the love from that with Chloe, who wasn't able to hear us talking here, oh. because she's a newer player. <laughs> That's right, I'll give, how do I get I'll, to her? Well, just I'll open a trade with her. I'm, That's right, I'll... I, I'm in the beginning. I'll give her everything, I don't care. No, no, it's alright. I could no, use some of the repair kits, if you don't mind sharing, though. I'll yes. just give Chloe some gold. Uh, does she need reagents and stuff? Here we go. Give her some focus. Well, patience. she's the mage. <laughs> yeah, I don't need any of this stuff. Trump's wax. Uh, I, I really actually gained a level through that. Believe it or not. Really? Wow. Nice. What level are you? Forty-seven. Nice. So I'm, I'm not even pretty much at all that. The, uh, regs. You know, dreaded fifty mark. And the game's not optimized yet, so if you're worried about running it on your PC, do know that they are going to be optimizing the game uh, and things like that. And there's an advantage still, even if, like, I can't really run the game. I have a MacBook that I can limp along in. But, you know, we got it for me now because it was worth getting in on the ground level. You know, it's well, not even the ground level, like the second story, because you guys have been working so hard for so long. But, you know, in the early days, it was worth it. Yeah, I, I forgot she didn't realize or she didn't know I was streaming. Yeah, it's all right. So and that's that the thing. Was... Where, yeah. Go Wait, ahead. It may interrupt you. Well, I was gonna say that's that's some of the sometimes that's the hard thing about streaming and playing these games too is you just kind of like you're doing two things at the same time and I don't even I don't even think at that point oh I'm being greedy or anything I was just like oh grab all the stuff you know <laughs> I don't even know well the most common stuff. thing that we see is people don't realize that you have to share the chest you actually have to be social in this game when you when you go to a dungeon you have a chest people have to sit and think of, and talk about what they're gonna split you don't just get it and click the button and get your loot and run away and go to the next group like you do in some games exactly and think about it this way I mean I'm probably gonna see Chloe again multiple times and if I you know, wasn't a nice gentleman and, and give her pretty much all the stuff that we found, you know, based on all the work that she did, she's going to not like me probably. And then maybe she, if she's in a group doing a dungeon and I'm all by myself, she might not invite me. Exactly. So this game drives itself off of social interactions. And unfortunately, yeah, there may be some people that take advantage of that and they may try to grief, uh, grief a, a group once or twice. But the thing is, is that I've seen this time and time and time and time again. What, the very first time that they wind up doing that, they don't get a group anymore. <laughs> yeah. This community is incredibly close-knit, and everyone knows everyone. The second that you do something like that, you better be willing to um, basically live with the consequences. Because you can be a bad guy, but if you're the bad guy, then you're going to live with the consequences of that. That could be being ostracized by the community. Exactly. All right, guys. Well, I think it's a good time for us to take a break, and I, I'm sure these other guys want to uh, jump off the call. Um, unless you want to stay on the call, that's fine with me. Um, I'm not sure how much longer we're going to be streaming because I don't know what time it is. Oh, wow, it's almost 6.30. So we're probably actually going to just hang it up for the night. Uh, sure. That's great that we actually got to jump in and do a whole dungeon with, uh, I don't know, we had five people in there for sure. Uh, most of the time and from start to finish and I that was amazing to see to experience that 
and to realize the entire time there was no point where I was like, oh, I got to go stand in this corner and just get healed because I'm a pansy. You know, nope. it, it just everybody works together, helps each other. Um, as Kazan mentioned before, player skill is is really involved here. If you're a good player, you could be low level and still beat somebody who's like high level and doesn't have quite the grasp on their skills yet. So there's lots of possibilities here. Fantastic, Zakir. We're looking forward to seeing you in the game. Nice. Don't forget to add us, John and Jane Beetlebear. Let me type that in chat. And what you're going to do in chat is you're going to type forward slash friend and then John. There you go. Um, one other thing, too, to remember since you just got the game, the cool thing is right now is because it's in such early development, you get plenty of time to screw around and play with your character build and try out all the different skills and all the different uh, combos and things like that because there's going to be wipes. So go into it knowing that what you do with this character doesn't matter long, long term because it's just a, it's just a great exa uh, time to like learn all the, the different skills and experiment. That's awesome. Yeah, so everybody playing, we will be streaming again tomorrow for just a short while. I got some friends coming over um, later in the evening, but we will be streaming um, a little bit. Or, a, you know, I don't, I don't know how long. We'll be streaming for a while, though, because it's Friday. Yeah, probably in the afternoon. Yeah, in the afternoon, um, Pacific time. So, And we'll be streaming on the weekend. And, of course, we have our Richard Garriott interview on Tuesday the 28th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this channel, so feel free to uh, check it out and uh, see what Richard Garriott has to say, and hopefully I have some really good questions for him, or else, right? <laughs> Pretty much. And let's thank our friends here that helped us tonight. We got uh, Themo, of course. Themo, I love your Skype picture. We should talk about that um, offline, <laughs> of course. Uh, we are a kindred I, I spirits. I like listening to them. Well, listening to him, have you seen his Skype picture? Look at that. Yes. He, we are oh, totally I'm, kindred I'm, spirits I'm here. I'm listening to him, but, but I'm also listening to him. <laughs> oh, and I, I see what you mean. And of course, Kat Baron Kaz and Phoenix Fire, uh, love you, buddy. Thanks for bringing us into the fold on this and showing and us absolutely. this awesome game. And Maybe I shouldn't ask this on the air, but would it be totally inappropriate to ask Themo to read me a bedtime story? <laughs> <laughs> Go the I would to have sleep. sweet dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just to uh, uh, kind of elaborate on a bit of news, as you all know, um, 30th is going to be the start of our big stream campaign. A lot of people have signed up to help us out. And I actually just got uh, some communication from the developers about uh, how they're going to kind of support us with this. So we're going to start speed, uh, We're going to start seeing a lot of other streamers come in to try to the Avatar in the near future. So stay tuned. It should be an exciting month. I'm very excited. Demo, are you excited? I am. Awesome. All right. So we're going to hang out. excited guys. for reasons he can't talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're so going to hang out. We're hanging the stream. Um, but we'll see you guys next time. So here we go on three, two, one. Goodbye, guys. This is Beetle Bear and Ambush Gamer. And Themo and Kazan. Kazan and Phoenix Fire. That's right. We'll see you guys next time. All right. On the next Price is Right. Oh, wait. That's the wrong show. <laughs>